Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number 10 at Gulfstream Park might be a local prep for the Pegasus World Cup. It's the grade three Harlan's holiday. We're going a mile and a 16th on the main track. And let's take a peek at this field. The number one Prince Lucky is your two to one morning line favorite, a horse that just excelled at Gulfstream in the spring and winter of 2019. Winning the grade three house open, winning the grade two Gulfstream Park mile, winning those races by a country mile, stretching out to a mile and a 16th. I'm not sure a two turn mile and a 16th is really his game, but I think it's within his scope against these horses. I mean, I kind of do too. I mean, you, you, when you look at him overall, you sort of feel like he just, he really prefers racing around one turn. Um, but he's only been around two turns three times in his life, um, and it just feels like he's a much better horse now than he was then. I, I don't, you know, I do prefer him going shorter, Dan, but it makes a ton of sense in this race. You also have the venerable War Story, who's closing in on $3 million in career earnings, and Bodie Express, a very lightly raced three-year-old who might just simply be the now horse in this race. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, the four, Flowers for Lisa, who I believe won the claiming crown jewel a couple of years ago in 2017 at Gulfstream Park on the lead, expected to make the lead. We know with Prince Lucky, the number one, his tactical speed is going to be there. And I'd expect Bodie Express to be lingering outside those two. I can see Bodie Express getting forward in this race, but I'll just, you know, when I look at it, I just felt like flowers for Lisa. Probably clear. That's his running style. He likes to be on the lead. Then we'll find out if he's good enough. Well, let's begin with Prince Lucky. I told you about those two graded stakes wins at Gulfstream Park. He got a little bit of a break. He was second in the Kelso. It was a good effort. Last time out, what are you going to do? He ran into maximum security, who's a champion, and he was four wide on the backstretch all the way through the turn. He tried hard that day. Yep. Trip just didn't work out, especially against that kind of horse who came back to win the cigar with a 111 buyer. There are no maximum securities in here. No, they're not. I mean, it's, it's all just about trip for him. And then maybe distance, you know, as you have sort of already alluded to, it, it doesn't feel like that's supposed to get him beaten here. Um, I, I prefer him going maybe a mile around one turn, but he's supposed to be able to get this trip. The number two is Eye of a Jedi going turf to dirt. His most recent dirt race was a little stake at Gulfstream during their summer meet in July. He is on the far outside right now. He is under a heavy drive. He is going to get up over Red Crescent, who we'll talk about in a little bit. This was a co-career best buyer of an 87. It pales in comparison to those of the big names. It really does. Um, he's very game to win this race. Um, he's, as you say, getting by Red Crescent late. Red Crescent had beaten him twice um, earlier in the year, so it was nice to see him turn the tables on that one, but um, Red Crescent's not the horse to beat in here. Red Crescent shipped to Gulfstream West in his last two races, won easily, won with a 101 buyer speed figure. Then in the Sunshine Millions Classic preview, his most recent start at the mile and a 16th distance. Here's Red Crescent, another situation where the favorite's going to have to work. Green blinkers on the outside eventually will wear down these horses. From a fig standpoint, he at least has that one triple-digit buyer that gives you hope. I'm just not sure if that race translates to this great event. Yeah, I don't know if it does either, uh, but he does have it in his back pocket. At least that was a seven for a long sprint. He hasn't run quite as well going longer around two turns, but he's in good form right now. Flowers for Lisa is fresh speed. The horse has hit the exact 23 of 47 times, 12 lifetime wins. I mentioned his affinity for Gulfstream with that win in the Jewel in 2017. His last race, he had his chances in the Governor's Day going a mile and 70 yards at Delaware. We turn into the stretch. Flowers for Lisa was controlling the race. Cord makes is a nice horse yeah. on the Mid-Atlantic circuit, but Cordmaker would be a pretty big price in this race. Uh, I think uh, Jorge Navarro is kind of hoping that maybe the, the, the rest, uh, the, the layoff, is going to get this horse going because he's run well fresh in the past. He has. And listen, he, he's got really good speed over a track where, you know, it can always be an advantage to be forwardly placed. He's going to try and make the lead in this race. You know, to me, he's not really good enough to beat the, the shorter prices if they show up with a good race, but he's going to be in front of the backstretch. War Story is just a nice horse, a multiple graded stakes winner. He's been bringing it for a long time right now. And last time out in the Grade 3 Greenwood Cup, he was characteristically game to finish second. We'll take a look at that race. A mile and a half affair. He's in the green. He is battling with Marconi, the winner of the Brooklyn earlier this year, and he's eventually going to get the best or better of Marconi. Here comes Adventist, who I think took advantage of their prolonged battle, yeah. runs down both of them. I'm not sure this was the greatest edition of the Greenwood no. Cup, but we know this horse can handle a mile and a 16th. He's very, very versatile. On his best day, yeah. he could give this field a oh, lot of nightmares. On his best day, he's hard for this field to handle. I, you know, It sort of feels like his best days are a little bit behind him now, and they have been concentrating basically on marathons for the last you know year or two. 
Um, so we'll see if he can cut back and still be effective. But listen, if he runs his good race, he's tough in here. The Bodie Express can be a little bit of a handful behind the gate. We've seen it on several occasions in the Florida Derby, unseated Nick Juarez, and then he ran a big race as a maiden on a race where he kind of wanted to be up front yeah. and a race where there was no pace. He just sat second behind maximum security and they ran one, two around the track. The Derby, we saw all the problems he had and then he was up to his old tricks in the Preakness, throwing a fit. I love that they gave him time. Me too. Because he is now, it just seems, maturing his last two races at Gulfstream West. Just dominant victories, including this performance. Yes, he got an easy lead and an easy trip. But just, just watch the way he drops the hammer on these overmatched foes in the lane. One-on-one buyer speed figure, breaking the track record, and as a lightly raced three-year-old, he has upside. Now, for me, I wonder, is he the next Mr. Jordan, a Gulfstream <laughs> West freak that's able to run these kind of big races on the lead, and when you throw some speed at him at Gulfstream against better horses, maybe it doesn't happen. At four to one, I'm not sure we're going to get four to one. Yeah, I'm so, willing yeah. to find out. I think he'll go off shorter than that, um, but he is the now horse. His last two races, um, yeah, they're not against horses like this, but it's not like this is, you know, the strongest grade three field you've ever seen. This horse is, his last two races are very good. I wonder if Fat Man's a little bit dirtied up in here for an underrated trainer, picking up a Rad Ortiz. This horse was a winner two starts back at Monmouth in a stakes race. Last time out, he was just in the spun to run race where he became spun to run and he came out of that race of course to win the Breeders Cup Dirt Mile 109 buyer second in the Cigar 105 buyer Fat Man had no chance in that race yeah. against that horse the way he performed um, he needs to run faster yeah. he would need a little bit of pace help up front but yeah. it's kind of tactical I, I don't see him as completely out of this I can see him getting the right trip in this race um, I just I just wonder if he's good enough Dan I look you know up and down his running lines and he's run 24 times I do not see the race that's going to beat some of the uh, better horses in here. Realm's a nibbler, no doubt about it. We'll go back to his last race where he n -n -n nibbled again and finished second. That's Bonray's zone on the lead. Realm has every chance. And the pace wasn't very fast. No. He was sitting off and he just didn't get there that day. I didn't think this was the greatest field in the world. He had his chances. It didn't work out. Um, maybe getting around two turns is what he wants to do. The last time he ran at Gulfstream, he kind of ran a surprisingly good third behind Marconi in the skip away. I don't know. He's the kind of horse to me where a minor award is probably his best, and even then he needs a trip. Yeah, I agree with all that stuff. I mean, I like him a lot as a horse. Um, he doesn't win that often. I think this is a fine distance for him, and the kind of horse that I would use somewhere in this race. But he, he's really hard to have a ton of confidence in on top. Top pick time in the Grade 3 Harlan's Holiday. We're banking on continued improvement from the lightly raced Bodhi Express who just might get the right trip sitting up close to the pace and pouncing on Prince Lucky, we have the same exact as 6-1. Yeah, I mean, they seem like the right two horses to me. I expect to I actually feel like they might be close in price, too. Yeah. We'll see how they wind up better. I'll just take the now horse, and we'll see how Prince Lucky does as they go around two turns with him again. Grade 3 Harlan's Holiday. Race number 10 at Gulfstream Park on Saturday has an approximate post 4.30 Eastern. Good luck.